Before we begin the review, I'd like to make another announcement. Um, I've probably said this before, but people keep asking me this question, so I might as well address it again. <sighs> when a man loves a woman very much... Oh, oh it's not that one. Oh, oh, sorry, I'll try it again. <clears throat> people have said in the past, why don't you use video footage in your... YouTube video reviews on video games and movies. Well, the truth of the matter is, I remember watching one of Mr. Black's movie reviews. They're trying to find a way to accuse reviewers on YouTube of, <laughs> here it comes, copyright infringement. Yeah, I know, I know, parody satire clause, but I like to avoid the hassle and just do reviews with my silly little drawings. Now, I know you guys want video footage in my reviews, but let's just put it this way. I like Random DC to stick around longer than Kitty DC did. Announcement over, on with the review. This is a review for Next Avengers Heroes of Tomorrow. It was made by Marvel Animated Features and Lionsgate. Marvel Animated Features is the branch that brought us good movies such as both the Ultimate Avengers movies and crap ones like The Invincible Iron Man and Doctor Strange. Now comes their fifth production called Next Avengers Heroes of Tomorrow in what seems like a poor attempt to reach out to a younger audience. Isn't that what the Marvel Ultimate Universe Power Pack New X-Men and Franklin Richards are for? Story. The story is set in a post-apocalyptic future in which all but two of the Avengers have been vanquished, the cliché way of saying killed, by a cold hard yet slightly boring looking robot named Ultron. Why is it when I hear that name I keep expecting to hear a self-narrated monologue by Peter Cullen? So Ultron kills off the Avengers, except for the Vision, who it's great to see him considering he was left out of both Ultimate Avengers movies, and Iron Man. Iron Man takes the Avengers children into hiding in hopes that one day they will defeat Ultron. Well, of course, if the Avengers didn't stop this unstoppable threat, maybe their snot-nosed kids can do it. Genius idea. Man, I love sarcasm. So, after the introduction, we begin our story 12 years after the events of Ultron's rise to power. Oh, that's right, Ultron decided the best way to maintain order is to take control of the entire planet. He's like the American government, if they had their way for once. At this point, we meet the offspring, James, son of a bitch. Sorry, couldn't resist. <laughs> James, son of Captain America and the Black Widow. Pym, son of Giant Man and the Wasp. Turin, the daughter of Thor, Azari, son of the Black Panther and Storm from X-Men fame, they never call her by name, but it's obvious it's her, and Francis, son of Hawkeye. The problem I have with these characters are, they are apparently designed to try and emulate teenagers in real life, using tired old cliches and dialogue that would sound better coming from Spider-Man. James can't decide what mindset he has, at one point he's lazy, then he's melancholy, and then he suddenly becomes a fearless leader. I mean, come on kid, make up your mind. If you need a hero name, how about Captain Mood Swing? Most of the others are passable, but it's Francis and Turin get the go in terms of bad characters. Turin spends the whole movie praying to four. Mm, that seems to be all she does. And Francis. Wow. It's amazing how so many characters that go for that Shadow the Hedgehog template when nine times out of ten are just plain laughable. <clears throat> you bring up my dad one more time, and I will punch you in the face. Has to be the most pathetic threat I have ever heard, and believe me, I've heard a few. Azari is the only character that seems interesting. So anyway, grumbling's over, back to the plot. The Vision arrives and informs Tony Stark, that's Iron Man for those of you who haven't been paying attention, has conquered half the planet. The kids stumble upon Stark's secret lab and discovers his Iron Avengers. James accidentally activates them in hopes it will be his dad, stupid pillock. They fly to take on Ultron, who isn't five lion robots sadly, who are quickly reprogrammed by the smiley douche droid, who, because of this, discovers the location of Stark and the kids. Tony informs the kids to remove Vision's head. Why? I don't really know, they just do. And to GET TO THE CHOPPER! No Arnold, get to the control center. But of course Ultron, the defender of the universe, arrives at their feet. Now I know the character's a big deal for Avengers fans, but Ultron's not really that great of a villain. He doesn't have any meaningful dialogue. He seems to respond with things like FALSE or ILLOGICAL. Like he's a Dalek with even fewer forms of emotion. This review is non-productive. Dude, chill out, it's just a review. False. A review is a human delusion. Ultron discovers the children and deems them unexpected. Of course, like any good American leader, when you discover something unexpected, you have to destroy it! Thankfully, Iron Man arrives and informs the kids to leave. Okay, that's a smart plan. Let a team of younger, more agile heroes flee while the aging has been fights the merciless robot. I wonder who's gonna win? As predicted, Stark gets screwed fast and Obi-Wan did in Episode 4. Ultron doesn't kill Iron Man, but takes him hostage, so the kids decide to go and rescue him. 
James and his funky design friends discover Ultron is keeping Tony in Ultra City, in which the best way to describe Ultra City is the capital comprised of giant metallic Tetris blocks. They have their first battle against the Iron Avengers, but are quickly dealt with. Francis at this point makes his appearance in all his quote unquote badass stylings. Turing gets humbled during this when she finds out she isn't as invincible as she first thought, and her thunder god daddy doesn't give a shit. Francis begins to grumble when he finds out, I thought I was the only Avenger. Yeah, well, life's a bitch, kid, get used to it. Francis agrees to show the gang to Ultron's Citadel, where they discover Ultron's massive sword, which he pulls out of his chest. Okay, okay, I'll stop the crap Voltron jokes. Where they discover Ultron's trophy room. It would have been funnier at this point if we saw a spider suit in one of the chambers. They find torn and battered costumes of their parents, have a good cry, nothing Oscar worthy but it's touching, and continue on their plan to rescue Tony. They set Tony free who just happens to mention two things. One, Tony actually built Ultron. Oh, you tell us this now? And of course number two... It's a trap! As predicted, the Iron Avengers and their smiley leader appear. Ultron spouts more shit as Francis, come and have your dinner? Don't ask. Arrives and provides a diversion for everyone to escape. After an emotional campfire scene, we learn Betty Ross and the Hulk have survived. Hulk is located in the desert, so everyone leaves Tetris City in hopes to find the Jolly Green has been. Bruce Banner, the Hulk, refuses to help, so the kids band together and decide they can defeat the Iron Avengers and Ultron. <laughs> Good luck with that one. They manage to kill a few of them, but thankfully the Hulk arrives on the scene after some <clears throat> persuasion and single-handedly wipes out the Iron Avengers. I do like the slightly older looking Hulk. He's more savage and he's like a Super Saiyan, except with white hair and not so lame. Ultron and the Hulk have a really short battle, in which the Hulk is victorious. So... Let me get this straight. We spent a whole movie gearing these kids up for a foreseen destiny that they protect the Earth from Ultron. When the Hulk does it for them? Why is this even called Next Avengers when it should really be Hulk vs Ultron, Battle of the Future? That's like having a movie about the kids of the Power Rangers trying to defeat Lord Zed when Godzilla shows up and does it for them. This plot is fucking stupid, tedious, and utterly predictable. Right, let's talk about the design of this movie, which is the movie's only redeeming feature. The character designs have this modern cartoony look, it's colourful and cartoony to help separate it from the previous movies, who went with the more realistic approach, and some cell shading of course. The voice acting is pretty good, the cast have those kind of voices that doesn't piss me off like recent kids films I've seen, and it would have been nice if the movie had more than three background tracks, for it felt like I was hearing the same song over and over again. Right, final verdict. A lesson to be learned. There is nothing interesting about the children of a team of heroes. Those who have seen Thunderbirds and Spy Kids can agree. It has a really poor and utterly predictable storyline. You will not be surprised by anything in this movie. Only watch this if you're a die-hard Avengers fan or something to shut the kids up for 10 minutes. And I close with a suggestion to Marvel Animated Features and Lionsgate. Why not give us something we WANT to see? Like maybe Ultimate Avengers 3, Marvel Zombies the Animated Feature, or maybe an animated piece about Spider-Man, who you've yet to show us. Imagine a next Justice League or Smash Brothers Juniors. Nah. Besides, if they did do that, then it would really be illogical. Fatality.